Hey groups, welcome back. We're gonna dive straight in here today with our kids' questions. So kids, huddle up and here we go. Kids question number one. So Jeremiah was a really young man when God called him and called him to start speaking prophetically to the people. And he was worried that, um, that people wouldn't listen to him because he was too young. He wasn't old enough to have the respect. And he didn't think maybe he had the right knowledge or the right words. He didn't have enough wisdom to speak. But um, God tells Jeremiah in chapter 33 to call on him when he doesn't know what to do. So check this out. Question number one. Do you have anything coming up that you get to choose what to do? Doesn't have to be a big thing. Maybe it's a little thing. Maybe for you guys, uh, you get to choose what sports you want to play or what activities you want to do, what your snack is after school. I know it feels like when you're little, it's limited on what you get to choose and what you get to do, how many decisions you make. And most of those are made by your parents, teachers, maybe some other people. One thing you do have some control over is how you spend your free time. Even things as simple as how we spend our time can be brought right before God as something we kind of live and offer to him. So do you have anything coming up that you get to choose what you get to do? Talk about that. Question two, have you ever asked God what his preference is, how he wants you to be spending some of that free time you have? So God told Jeremiah in chapter 33 to come to him when he had questions, and that invitation is yours as well. So my question to you would be, how can you remind yourself when you're faced with a decision to go back to God and seek that matter with him and, and find out what he would desire of you in that. How can you do that? So as we go into these questions, adults, one of the realities is there's a, a study that was done a number of years back. I know it's been redone, but the one I remember was that um, an 18-year-old an living in like a congested area. So I would say like even in our little part of the world, it's not cram-packed like Chicago, but it's very busy, who drives a car and has a cell phone. That person makes more life and death decisions in like a one week span than a person living in pioneer days made in their entire life. Isn't that interesting? Like we face decisions all the time. So it's not a, a small thing, the quantity of decisions we make. Think of that and the, the power of quantity when I ask this question. What kind of decisions do you currently have that you're facing in your life right now? Talk about those with your group. Question number two, instead of asking or instead of making a decision based on what matters to you, what would it look like if you went to God and you ask him, what matters to you in this? God, what's your angle on this? How would that change your decision or how would that change your peace with the decision? Read together uh, Jeremiah 1, 4 to 6, and then we'll come back for question number 3. So God in that scripture is appointing Jeremiah and calling him to speak to the nations. However, Jeremiah is coming up with all kinds of excuses as to why this isn't a good idea. Right? There's nothing new. Moses did the same thing. It's very common. What is one way that you feel? No, I'm not going to limit it to one way. What are some of the excuses you make because you feel inadequate to spread the good news of the gospel to your friends, family, and coworkers?
All right, friends, as you dive into these questions and wrestle with these things, remember this, the quantity of your decisions really does matter. The amount of decisions you make piles up a lot of effects and trusting God in the big and the little things really does change the, um, it kind of seasons everything with the gospel. I encourage you, trust him and be inquiring of God often what his angle is on the decisions you're making. Grace and peace.